When you picture a ski resort, you think about getting away from it all. But there's no disassociating the hustle and bustle of the city from Stratton, which over the past few years has found its way onto posters in pretty much every commercial area within the New York City metropolitan region. Stratton is a pretty sizable ski resort for Vermont, but what happens when a mountain gets pushed to this many people? Well, in this video, we'll go through Stratton's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort stacks up in our overall rankings. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like and subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our content. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, where you can follow along for exclusive content you won't see in our videos. Enjoy! So the first thing you might be wondering is, why is Stratton so heavily advertised? Well, this isn't exactly an open and shut question, but we can posit it all comes down to the resort's owner, Altera. Better known as the issuer of the Icon Pass, Altera owns 16 ski resorts across North America, and Stratton just happens to be the closest one to the majority of Northeast cities. But wait a minute, you might be asking, what about Wyndham and Camelback, which are closer to some Northeast cities than Stratton, and also on the Icon Pass? Well, it turns out that Altera doesn't actually own either of these mountains, and they just have a partnership agreement with them for pass access. So in addition to not being directly responsible for their marketing, Altera does not have a financial incentive to advertise anything besides the passes for these resorts. So with an ad budget that's in all likelihood massive, that's how you find Stratton ads on billboards, buses, and even inside New York City subway stations. So let's get to the important question. Does Stratton live up to the hype? With over 670 acres of skiable terrain, Stratton is the second largest ski resort in Vermont, and on paper, the resort stands out for its size. However, this terrain sits along a pretty vanilla footprint, with very little in the way of distinctive trail designs and unique natural features across the slopes, especially compared to what you get if you drive a few hours north. Stratton does offer a respectable variety of terrain for southern Vermont, but don't expect to be surprised or moved emotionally by any of its trails. Stratton's vertical drop is also shorter than several competitors, with a lift served drop of just over 1,900 feet, a few hundred feet less than the best mountains in central and northern Vermont. The resort technically advertises a 2,000-foot vertical drop, but this is only attainable if you ski down to the overflow parking lot, which doesn't have any lift service. While several Vermont ski resorts boast multiple peaks, Stratton is just one mountain, with a singular summit and two base areas. The mountain can essentially be broken down into two resort sides. The main side, which is home to terrain for all ability levels and offers a more favorable north-facing terrain exposure, and the Sun Bowl side, which features a longer vertical drop, slightly tougher terrain, and somewhat fewer crowds. Stratton isn't the most beginner-oriented ski resort in Vermont, but those learning will still find a decent experience here. A bunny hill and the nearby, relatively flat Tamarack area call home to most of the resort's green trails. But while these spots are isolated from more advanced skier and rider traffic, they're plagued by slow, fixed grip lift service. Most of the other lifts on Stratton's main side do serve at least one green trail. Beginners can access a few green runs from the summit, but these popular trails tend to become very crowded. There isn't much green terrain on the Sun Bowl side, but some of Stratton's blues, especially in lower mountain areas, are on the easier side for Vermont and might be considered greens at other mountains. Speaking of blues, Stratton offers a solid variety of terrain for intermediates, and the resort might be better designed for this demographic than any other. The resort is chock full of moderately sloped groomed cruisers, and although blue trails directly off the summit are somewhat limited in number, some of the resort's black runs are groomed, and many intermediates who have skied or boarded further north won't have much of an issue with them. Stratton does also feature a handful of intermediate-centric glade zones in lower mountain areas, these can be a lot of fun for those looking to get into tree skiing or riding, but thin cover is always a given on these, even on the best days. Freestyle enthusiasts will enjoy Stratton's competitive range of terrain parks. The five parks offer diverse features for all ability levels, and for 2024, the resort now has a border cross set up along the length of the Big Ben Run. Stratton's hardest terrain exists on the upper half of its footprint. Single black runs are a mix of fairly steep groomers and ungroomed bump runs, with grooming operations tending to get heavier during holiday periods. Some black runs feature side-by-side -side groomed and ungroomed terrain, which can be nice for those learning moguls. 
If you're looking for truly difficult terrain, the resort offers a few decently formidable double blacks off the Ursa and shooting star lifts, but the actual steep sections of these trails are short and even these runs get groomed sometimes. The mountain also features a number of enjoyable advanced and expert glade areas, but Stratton is much more for families than thrill seekers, and those looking for serious challenges can find much better options elsewhere in the state. Getting around Stratton is easy thanks to a well-designed mountain layout and impeccable signage. Trail markings at every intersection make the directions to each mountain area or lift abundantly clear. While the resort contains two bases and a few distinct areas, if you just follow the signs, you'll never end up in the wrong place. The mountain's lone summit area is easy to reach and provides access to every trail on the mountain. It takes at least two lifts to get to the top from the Snowbowl base, but the main base area offers direct base to summit lift access via the gondola. The one major downside is that some trails in or out of major resort areas can be relatively flat. As one of the closest decently sized resorts to major northeastern metropolitan areas, Stratton is known for its crowds, especially on weekends and holidays. But while it doesn't solve the problem, Stratton does its best to mitigate the effects of crowding with one of the best and highest capacity lift setups in Vermont. The resort boasts a gondola, four high-speed six-pack lifts, one high-speed quad, and a few helper fixed grip triples and quads, all of which work together to provide high capacity in every mountain area. Every lift has at least one alternative, resulting in a lack of resort choke points. But while Stratton's large uphill capacity efficiently moves visitors up the hill, it also leads to very few pockets of isolation around the resort. If you visit on a peak weekend or holiday, it's hard to find parts of the mountain where there aren't others around you. The resort's relatively flat summit doesn't do it any favors either, lacking much in the way of unique natural characteristics to make up for the number of people there. The resort often sees cloudy weather, but views on a clear day are tame compared to some other Vermont resorts. Like all mountains in southern Vermont, Stratton sees variable conditions throughout the season thanks to varying temperatures and mediocre natural snow accumulation. The resort does see a few powder days each season, but runs tend to lack cover or get icy after sudden temperature drops or a few days with no snow. Annual snow totals are somewhat lower than most ski resorts in central and northern Vermont, although a largely north-facing footprint does help preserve terrain quality when temperatures remain below freezing. However, when natural conditions aren't the best, Stratton does offer decently strong snowmaking operations. The resort boasts snowmaking coverage on an impressive 95% of its footprint, which provides resilience and gives the resort flexibility to operate nearly all of its mountain areas, even with poor natural conditions. This all being said, this coverage metric does not always translate to Stratton using its snow guns on all the trails it's able to, and a considerable minority of trails, especially ungroomed advanced and expert runs, often remain closed through the end of January or so. But even if Stratton can't match resorts further north in terms of the number of trails open, the resort also stands out for its grooming, and guests can expect reliably smooth trail conditions on all green and blue runs, as well as a sizable chunk of single black and even double black trails. While Stratton doesn't consistently see the same frigid temperatures as ski resorts further north in the state, the mountain can get pretty cold and uncomfortable at times. But fortunately, if you're looking to go in for a break, there are a number of places to stop in and warm up. The Main and Sunbowl base lodges are probably your best bets for a break, with decent amounts of seating and both food and shopping options. Choices become more sparse on the mountain itself. The Mid-Mountain Lodge near the top of the American Express lift is your only choice for food above the base, and it gets packed on weekends. The small Summit Deck and Hubert House shacks at the top provide seating and isolation from the elements, but they offer no services at all, including bathrooms, and they aren't always open. One of the most appealing features of Stratton is its proximity to major northeast cities. The resort is about four and a half hours away from New York and three and a half hours from Boston, making it about an hour or two closer to these cities than popular mountains in central Vermont. While there's no official public transportation between Stratton and these cities, several private companies run weekend or even day trips from the New York City and Boston metropolitan areas. This makes Stratton a very practical option for a weekend getaway, especially if you don't have a car. Another enticing feature about Stratton, it's the closest mountain to both of these cities that's unlimited on the Icon Pass. All mountains that are closer, including Camelback and Wyndham, which we mentioned earlier, and New Hampshire's Loon, which is close to Boston, only come with five or seven days of access depending on your pass level. When it comes to staying at Stratton, the resort offers an extensive selection of on-mountain hotels and condos. Many of these are in the resort's village, which hosts many evening attractions, and others are directly slopeside. 
All on-mountain options are pricey, however. A few reasonably priced Airbnbs are within close driving distance of the resort, but most other cheap options are several miles away. Parking at Stratton can be a pain, especially during peak times. Overflow parking at Lot 2 is a mile away from the main base area and requires a shuttle to get to the slopes. Although thanks to the treetop way trail, this lot does at least offer ski in access. If you get to the mountain earlier or go on a less busy day, other parking options are closer and only require a small walk to the lifts. While it's no Killington or Tremblant, Stratton offers opera ski and nightlife experiences that are within the upper echelon of what you can get in the Northeast. Grizzlies is the main slopeside bar, and it gets packed when the lifts close. Moving down into Stratton Village, there are a mix of quiet sit-down bars and lively venues. Some of the best include Bar 802, a sit-down joint with excellent food and beer selections, and the Mulligans and Green Door Duplex, which has casual pub vibes on the top floor and live music or DJs on the bottom. When things start to warm up during the spring, guests will find outdoor patios to soak in the sun. Stratton delivers an admirable combination of terrain diversity, lift infrastructure, and easy navigation, and the resort sits within a reasonable driving distance of several major metropolitan areas. But the resort doesn't offer the snow, challenge, or isolation of other Vermont mountains, and despite the high uphill capacity, slopes can get really congested on peak weekends and holidays. But perhaps the biggest drawback about Stratton, and maybe the reason the resort is willing to shell out so much money on advertising, is its ticket price. One day rates don't only match those of better resorts just a few hours further north, but they often exceed them, with prices going for nearly $200 on weekends, even if you buy in advance. This is an insane amount of money to be paying for any ski resort, let alone one that offers what might be best described as a slightly above average experience. Off-peak weekday tickets are more reasonable, but if you choose to visit Stratton, it's probably wisest to plan ahead and do so with an Icon Pass. Now let's go through how Stratton stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Stratton sees typical accumulation totals for Southern Vermont, which is to say that natural accumulation isn't negligible, but it's not the most reliable, and the resort gets a 5 for snow. Stratton sees variable weather throughout the winter, including some freeze-thaw cycles, but an extensive snowmaking footprint helps a lot, and the resort gets a 6 for resiliency. Stratton offers a 670-acre skiable footprint and a 1,417-acre footprint from boundary to boundary, and the resort gets a 4 for size. Stratton offers a decent variety of terrain for beginner to advanced skiers and riders, but the trails themselves don't have as much character as those at some other mountains, and the resort gets a 5 for terrain diversity. Stratton has a couple of pretty demanding mogul runs and some fairly steep pitches, but several northeast mountains are harder, and the resort gets a 5 for challenge. Stratton boasts a modern, high-speed lift fleet with the exception of some beginner areas, and the resort gets an 8 for lifts. Stratton offers a ton of uphill capacity for its size, but it still sees a lot of congestion, especially during peak times, and the resort gets a 6 for crowd flow. While its lodges aren't the fanciest, Stratton offers a number of places to stop in for breaks across the mountain, and the resort gets a 6 for facilities. Stratton's excellent signage and top-down shape make it really easy to get around for its size, and despite a few flat areas, the resort still earns an 8 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Well, Stratton feels pretty commercialized, and the so-so views and lack of isolation contribute to a score of 3 in this category. These categories add up to an overall score of 56, placing Stratton 5th in Vermont. Stratton's lift infrastructure and easy-to-navigate footprint help it stand out against other mountains in the southern part of Vermont, but when it comes to the physical terrain, natural snow, and classic New England vibe, there are several options that offer much better packages. Ultimately, if the lift ticket price doesn't cross Stratton off your list, choosing between Stratton and other resorts will probably come down to the value of location. For more information on Stratton and over 90 North American ski resort destinations, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.